So, my dear children, in the earlier chapter, we have discussed several MCQ questions related to the electricity lesson. Now, in this lesson part or in this chapter, we'll be discussing several essay type questions related to the electricity lesson. Right now, let's see what are the questions given. So, first question given name the two main types of connection in bulbs. So, you know that if you take a connection in a bulb, no matter the bulb or whatever the connection types, right? I mean like for not only for the bulbs, for each and every instrument, right? We can use several connections. So, the connections that we can use are series connections and the parallel connections. So, the two types of connections my dear children are number one, series connection then parallel series connection and parallel connection the two main types of connections that we can observe not only in bulbs but in each and every electrical uh, equipments. Draw two circuit diagrams to show the connection of three bulbs with a switch, four dry cells as per to above connections in number one. So, we have to show the circuit diagrams separately for a parallel connection and for a series connection of bulbs. Here, especially they are mentioning about the bulb, so we have to use a bulb. Two circuit diagrams. So, I will divide the area into two. So, this is series, this is parallel. Now, let us draw. So, I told you that when you are drawing circuit diagrams, we have to specially use straight lines, right? Okay, so in a series connection, how many uh, bulbs are there? Three bulbs. So, three bulbs are there with a switch, four dry cells. So, first of all, we will draw out four dry cells. One, two, three, and four. Right, four dry cells. So there are four dry cells. Then we have to interconnect these terminals. Okay. Then let us go for the series connection. So, one, two, three, and four, four bulbs. So, they are mentioning that there is a switch, right? Yes, a switch is there. So, let us include the switch. We have to include the switch here. Right. So, this is the series connection circuit. So, there are four dry cells, four electric bulbs with a switch in a series connection. Now, let us go for the parallel connection. 1, 2, 3 and 
separately connect the two terminals together like this then the four drivers one two three four so they are not mentioning about how the dry cells are getting connected especially we are discussing about the bulb connections now so bulb connections we have to draw it parallel and series okay so that's why i have used this kind of a figure so we have to interconnect so we'll include the switch as well so this is the circuit diagram right for a parallel connection series connection for well, they are saying three bulbs right so we have to draw three bulbs only three bulbs only three bulbs so they are mentioning only three bulbs so we'll draw only three bulbs See, there's the other parts. Only three bulbs, my dear children. Not four, but three. Four dry cells, but three bulbs. Right. So, three bulbs in series connection and three bulbs in parallel connection with a switch with four dry cells right then so let's move on with the next question why it is more probable to use 15 watt led bulb than using 25 watt cfl bulb right two reasons so 15 watt led bulb is going to provide the same electrical energy or the same uh, light energy not the electrical energy same light energy actually even more than light energy than that of 25 watt of CFL bulbs, right? So, by use, using 15 watt LED bulb, we can get more amount of electric, not the electric, but light energy. We can get more amount of light energy, even way more than 25 watt CFL bulb. And the other thing is that it's going to save us with energy. As 25 watt CFL bulb, what 25 watt means it's using 25 joules within one second. So 25 watt CFL bulb is going to use more electrical energy than 15 watt LED bulb. So first thing is CFL bulb consume more electricity CFL bulb consumes more electricity then the second one is more light is given out by LED more light is given out by LED than the CFL bulb So then the CFL bulb, more light is given out by the LED. Even though it is 15 watt and even though that CFL bulb is 25 watt, more light energy is given out by 15 watt LED than 25 watt CFL bulb because of the resistance, right? And the main energy getting 
converted away in energy provided by the LED is light energy. So therefore more light can be obtained by using an LED. Next one, state reasons for using nichrome as the heating unit in electrical appliances like rice cookers and heaters. So you know that in rice cookers and heaters, the core is made up with nichrome. The main reason for this thing is because nichrome is having a good resistance. Therefore, it can be heated up to a higher value or to a higher temperature and that heating process or the uh, or nichrome is going to heat up very quickly than the other metals right so number one is number one it is it is heating it is heating up very quickly right it is heating up very quickly then number two right second one nichrome has Nichrome has high resistance. Therefore, therefore, can be heated. can be heated to high temperature so nichrome has high resistance therefore can be heated to high temperature and the first one is it is heating up very quickly as it is having high temp uh, high resistance it is heating up very quickly so these are the key points that we use nichrome as the heating equipments to make heating equipments that utilize electrical energy right because of these key points mainly because of nichrome having higher resistance materials that has high resistance can be utilized to make these instruments right then Appliances like rice cookers, heaters draw more current from household electricity. Right two reasons. So appliances like rice cookers, heaters draw more current from household electricity. Right two reasons. So if you take rice cookers and heaters, all of these things are utilizing heat energy given out by the electric current. Means that these things are made up with nichrome. Nichrome is having high resistance. Therefore, more amount of electrical energy is getting consumed. Right? So, number one is high resistance. High resistance. Number two, in order to operate, they should be heated up to a higher temperature. So in that case also, large amount of electricity is getting drawn out, right? Because, because these are, because these are heated up to high temperatures. So, first thing is that these materials or these equipments, they have high resistance. So, higher the resistance, 
higher the amount of electrical charges which is getting absorbed. And the second one, because these are heated up to high temperatures. So these things are getting heated up to high temperatures. So in order to heat up to a high temperature, high amount of electricity or high amount of current is drawn out from the circuits. What is the type of connection in household electric circuits? Write reasons for having a bow connection. So when we are discussing about the MCQ questions, you come across with this kind of a question, I think, like you could remember. So we discussed that in household electric circuits, there is a parallel connection. So the first answer should be parallel connection. Parallel connection. Write reasons for having a bow connection. So the main reason is it helps to it helps to distribute electricity distribute electricity as separate circuits so it helps to distribute electricity as separate circuits in the house so in the house this parallel connection helps to distribute right distribute electricity as separate circuits means like for living room a separate circuit for kitchen a separate circuit right so it would be more convenient we can do our work stuffs in our living room without turning on the switches at the kitchen so that's a very good advantage right and the other thing is that if there is a certain defect in a certain type of a circuit, let's say that there is an electric leak in the living room area. So we can disconnect that particular circuit from the main switch or from the uh, distribution box by lowering a fuse. Then if there is a repair, then we can continue with the repair even though the other areas are going to work. I told you that in a parallel connection, we can remove one single circuit one single circuit line but however it's not going to affect for the other circuit lines right so that's a very good advantage if there are any repairs which is going in the house to make to do the repairs right or to carry out repairs this would come in handy the parallel connection would come in handy so we can write the second one There are if there are defective if there are defective circuits. Easy to repair if there are defective circuits. If there are defective circuits in the house, it's easy to repair these things, right? And also it's easy to identify these things as we have separate circuits for each and every area in our house. So in our household electricity, there is parallel connection and it helps to distribute electricity as separate circuits in the house. And it is easy to repair if there are any defective circuits if there are any defective circuits right so these are the advantages of having parallel connection in the household electric circuits right next question 
when a compass is placed near a copper wire that carry electricity, a deflection in the needle can be observed. State the reasons. Now, my dear children, we conducted this activity at the lab. So, the reason for the deflection of compass is that here, when conducting electricity from a conductor, a magnetic field is generated from the conductor. So, that would help to deflect the compass needle as the compass needle is also having some amount of a magnetic field because it is a type of a magnet which is freely pivoted on a certain structure. So, my dear children, reason for this thing is because upon passing electricity through a conductor, a magnetic field is getting generated from it. Okay. So, we can write the answer. When when passing electricity when passing electricity right when passing electricity a magnetic field when passing electricity a magnetic field is generated a magnetic field is generated by the current by the current carrying conductor by the current carrying conductor So, my dear children, when passing electricity, a magnetic field is generated by the current carrying conductor. That's why the compass needle is going to rotate. Write two equipments which uses the above sixth phenomena to operate. Two equipments. So, you can write any of two equipments which uses the magnetic effect. So, I told you that most of the most of the fans and most of the equipments that use motors in order to operate are going to use this effect, the magnetic effect. I told you that in order to rotate a motor, right, in order to rotate a motor, a magnetism is really important. We will be learning these things when you are going on to further grades like in grade 11, right? But however, up to now, remember, in order to rotate a motor, magnetism is really important. There should be a magnetic field. Otherwise, the motor will not rotate. So, to provide the magnetic field, an electromagnet is used in the instruments which are operated from motors, especially like larger motors which we are going to plug into alternating current, household electricity. So, the instruments like drills, drilling machines, right, drills, then uh, serving machines, okay, serving machines, drills, then after that fans, these instruments, electric bells, these instruments are going to utilize or are going to use this magnetic effect given out by the electric current. So, we will write down the answers. Number 1, electric bells. So, my dear children, electric bells, in each and every electric bell, you know that a magnetic effect is getting generated. Even we have created a small bit of a electric bell. We discussed how to create a small bit of a simple electric bell under an assignment. So, the second one would be number two, any kind of a rotating device or rotating equipment that has a motor like fans, fans, 
washing machines. And drills. So I'm not going to mention that thing. These two are enough. Put as etc. So in fans and machine machines, the motor, right? The motor which is going to rotate is going to utilize the magnetic effect given out by the electric current. Right then. So let's head on to the next question, my dear children. What is the method used to plate gold on a copper statue? So the method used to plate gold on a copper statue. Now, if you are given with a copper statue in order to plate gold, you know that we follow the method called electroplating. We use the statue as the negative terminal or the negative end and we use the gold as the positive terminal. Then we dip it in a solution of gold sulfate or gold chloride then after that we are providing electricity by that way the statue is going to be plated with gold right so that's how the electroplating is going to work so my dear children the method that we use to plate gold on a certain um, statue a copper statue if you want to plate gold in a certain type of a copper statue, we use the method called electroplating. So we can write down the answer. Electroplating. Electroplating is our answer. Electroplating. Right? Electroplating is the answer. Then 10th one given, write two other industrial applications of about processing 9. So, where do we use this electroplating thing? Right, where do we use with this electroplating thing? Number one is industrial applications, means that we should have to write down some like commercial applications of electroplating. So you know that in galvanizing buckets, we use the process called electroplating. And the other thing is that in order to coat tin on iron cans, right? In order to coat tins, tin is a type of a metal, right? You know that sardine tins. So sardine tins are actually made up with iron. But we plate the metal called tin on this iron uh, structure by using the method called electroplating. That's why it is referred as sardine tins. Tins. However, it is not tin, it is not made up with tin, but a tin plated one. Okay, it's a tin plated one. So, my dear children. So, you have to write down two other industrial applications of the above process. So, industrial applications are number one, coating, coating tin on iron, iron baskets. So, you can use each and every basket you now. Then in galvanizing also, you know that in galvanizing also, we use the process called electroplating. Here in galvanizing, we plate zinc on a certain iron surface, right, in order to avoid from rusting process. So these are the two answers for the question given in here. These are the industrial applications of electroplating. So galvanizing buckets. We will write down as buckets. Right. Galvanizing buckets and iron strings.
right iron strings that are used in like uh, for the pencils we use different kinds of iron strings so those things are also galvanized right so these are the industrial applications of electroplating so let's move on with the next question my dear children write the effects of electric current so my dear children actually there are four effects of electric current so we'll write all four in here so the four effects of electric current is lighting effect like in led heating effect like in filament bulbs and nichrome coils magnetic effect like in trains or else in temporary magnets electromagnets then finally chemical effect like in the earlier question where we discussed about the electroplating so these are the four main types of effects given out by the electric current so we'll write down our answer lighting effect heat in effect lighting effect heat in effect then after that magnetic effect then after the magnetic effect we'll write down the fourth one as well chemical effect chemical effect right so my dear children lighting effect heat in effect magnetic effect and chemical effect are the four types of effects given out by the electric current next question write the energy conversion in each of given appliances bulb so it's not mentioned in what type of a bulb but however if it is given as just a bulb then definitely it is a filament bulb so i'll mention that thing as filament so that it would be more convenient for you right so in a filament bulb my dear children electricity electricity is getting converted to heat energy this is the main type of energy given out ah, remember always in a filament bulb heat energy is the main energy given out as a secondary energy light given okay heat energy heater once again the same thing electricity electricity to heat electricity to heat television in a television there are two main types of energies one thing is light energy you know that it's going in the screen there are different types of lights which is getting emitted right that's how we can see the pictures and the other thing is that without the sound there is no use we can't get the entertainment which we are searching for by just looking at the figures so therefore sound should also be there in the television so there are two main types of energies given out by the television those two types are sound energy and light energy both the things are very important during the operation of a television right so my dear children there are two main types of energy conversions over there light and sound both the things are very important so electricity electricity to light 
and sound. Both the forms are very important. Then finally the table fan. In a table fan, in a table fan my dear children, electricity is getting converted to kinetic energy. Right? As the table fan, the motor of the table fan is going to rotate. No? It's going to rotate. That's how the wind is getting generated. So, rotation means a movement. Movement means kinetic energy. So, electricity is getting converted to kinetic energy. Electricity is getting converted to kinetic energy in table fan. So, these are the types of energy conversions that occur in each of the appliances. In a filament bulb, electricity to heat energy. In a heater, once again, electricity to heat energy. In a television, electricity to light and sound energy. In a table fan, electricity to kinetic energy. So, these are the examples for energy conversions that occur in appliances, household electrical appliances, right then. So, we will move on with the next question. Write two materials that are used to create LED, right? Two materials that used to create LED. So, we use silicon as the main element to create leds silicon right silicon so number one silicon number two germanium silicon and germanium are the two main types of materials that we use to create LED. All of these things are, remember my dear children, semiconductors. So, in the earlier case, we discussed that under the theoretical parts. Transistors are like semiconductors which are going to emit large amount of heat. Transistors are actually made by joining several diodes together. So, diodes are also made by silicon and germanium. LED is also a type of a diode. So, therefore, to make LEDs, we use these materials germanium and silicon, right? Silicon and germanium. Right, the energy conversion that occurs in LED bulbs. So, in an LED bulb, the main energy conversion which is going to occur is light energy, electricity to light energy, right. Less amount of heat energy given as a secondary product. Unlike the filament bulbs, the light energy given as the primary source of energy and as the secondary source of energy, the heat is given. Each and every electrical instrument is providing heat as a secondary source of energy. It is because of their resistance. But however, in a filament bulb, that resistance is very high. So, therefore, it is providing heat energy as the primary energy plus light energy as the secondary energy. However, we utilize the light energy, therefore wastage is too much, right. That is why a filament bulb is consuming more electrical energy, right. So, we can write the answer, electricity electricity to light energy. This is the energy conversion. Electricity to light energy. 
right so we'll move on with the next question usage of led bulbs become very popular among people state three reasons so you have to write down three reasons why led bulbs are becoming popular among people why right? you have to write down three reasons for this first reason is that usage of led bulbs are very cost efficient in long run right not in a short time period but in long run it's very cost efficient it's going to save a huge amount of money in from your pocket and in the second case the lifetime of led bulbs are very high you can use up to 20000 hours and the third one if there is a defect in the led bulb we can repair it my dear children led bulbs can be repaired we can replace the led unit or the circuit in an led right but however if the if we are using a filament bulb if the filament is going to burn up in the filament bulb then we can't reuse it we have to replace it there is no way of using again those filament bulbs we have to throw it away right so therefore my dear children usage of led bulbs are widely what now it's becoming very popular because of the reasons which i have mentioned above so we'll write down our reasons so you have you have been asked to write down three reasons number one cost efficient So cost efficient or cost effective in long run. Here long run mean in future. Okay. Number two. Number two is that having long having high lifetime. Having high lifetime up to like 20,000 hours. Up to like 20,000 hours, we can use a single LED bulb. Then, number three, if there is a defect. then these can be then these can be repaired right these can be repaired so if there is a defect then we can repair these things and the other thing is that they are having high lifetime up to like 20,000 hours we can use and they are cost effective in long run this is the reason right why leds are more often used in our day-to-day -day life and you know that it's going to consume less amount of electricity so therefore wastage of electricity is also less right okay if you are given with 10 bulbs of 25 volt can those be plugged into domestic electric circuit if so under which connection a good question my dear children so they are asking a very simple question if you are given with 10 bulbs of 25 volts each can those be plugged into a domestic electric circuit? If so, under which kind of a connection? Now, if there are 10 bulbs with 25 volts, if you multiply 25 by 10, answer would be 250 volt. In our normal domestic household circuits, 
the voltage is just 230. So yes, of course you can plug these 10 bulbs into domestic electric circuits without any trouble. But we have to connect it properly, otherwise all bulbs will burn out and also you might get hurt, right? So what's the connection method? If so, what is the connection method? So in the earlier lesson parts and when you are discussing earlier questions also, I think you could remember, I told you that if these things are connected in a series connection, then the voltage is getting divided equally among the bulbs. So that each would have 230 division 10, 23 volts. Maximum can be 25. If it is given as 23, then the bulb is going to light up for sure. Right? So, our answer should be years under a series connection under a series connection years under a series connection these bulbs can be plugged into can be plugged into a domestic circuit can be plugged into a domestic electric circuit right so my dear children, yes, you can plug these 10 volt, 10 bulbs of 20, 25 volts each into a domestic electric circuit big under a, remember, but only under a series connection. So if you want, I can draw the relevant figure like this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. So we need to connect A and B terminals to domestic electric circuit by using a plug pin. The 10 bulbs of each having 25 volts. So all together this system would consume 250 volts. Right then. So my dear children. This is the way of connecting these 25 bulbs into a domestic electric circuit. One bulb is having only 25 volts. But however, collectively in a series connection, they are going to consume all 230 volts of domestic electricity without any trouble. This is how the series connection works. Actually, what happens in a series connection is that when conductors are connected in a series connection, their resistance is getting increased. So the current and the voltage which is passing is getting divided, right, according to that. Okay then, mention the average voltage and the type of current in domestic electricity. So in domestic electricity, my dear children, we discussed that the normal voltage is around 230 volts and the type of current which is being utilized in domestic electricity is alternating current alternating current so 230 
volts alternate in current. Alternate in current. Alternate in current is the answer. Next one. If you are given with a hot plate of 1500 watt, read the question very carefully. This is a good question, my dear children. If you are given with a hot plate, 1500 watt, and an immersion heater of 1510 watt, heater 1510 watt, but the hot plate 1500 watt. Which one will you use to boil water? State reasons. Let's imagine that you guys are going to make a cup of tea. And instead of using an oven, a hearth, you are going to use one of these two. What is that? Either it is a immersion heater or else it is a uh, hot plate in order to boil water. The power is given. 1500 is the power of the hot plate and 1510 is the immersion heater. So, by looking at this, you can say that the amount of electrical energy, the amount of electrical energy consumed by the hot plate is very less, right? Because the power is less. Power is not, actually it is not very less, but however, comparatively to the immersion heater, it is less. Here 1500, here 1510. So, using the hot plate is more convenient. But that is not the answer. Using the immersion heater is more convenient. I am going to draw and show why is that. Hot plate means a type of a hearth actually. Specialty is that it is getting generated or it is generating heat like a rice cooker, right? It is generating heat like a rice cooker. So, this is the hot plate. It is a type of a plate like this. So, this area, this red color area is going to heat up and by utilizing that heat energy, we can cook anything we want. That is how it is going to work. So, if you want to boil water, first of all, you need to keep a, some kind of a vessel on the hot plate. Then you have to fill water into the vessel like this. And now, when it is being plugged into a certain circuit through the plug pane, and now it is going to work. Right? Now it is going to work. Okay, so here, this is the hot plate. This is the water vessel. Water vessel. Right, so we need to plug it into the household electricity like this. Why this thing is not efficient like the immersion heater? Now I am going to go and show the immersion heater for you guys. Immersion heater is like this. The plug pane. Wire. This is the handle of the immersion heater, right? Then here comes 
Ava. instrument so this is the heater water the plug so what's the difference here difference is that my dear children when you take the hot plate we have to heat the vessel then from utilizing that heat energy the water is going to boil we can't directly heat water but however in an immersion heater water is directly getting heated because we insert the immersion heater into the water not like this so in a hot plate the vessel should heat up first then that heat is getting transferred to water but however in an immersion heater water is directly getting heated so therefore heater is more efficient than the hot plate so if there is a if there is a considerable change like hot plate is 700 but the heat immersion heater is 1500 then using hot plate is somewhat profitable but however if the change the what value is not that much larger then you can save more energy by using the immersion heater because when using immersion heater the water will boil up very quickly within less time period so this one will take like five minutes but however this one will take like 10 to 15 minutes right 10 to 15 minutes it's because first of all the vessel should heat up then after that the water is going to boil but however in the first one when you are going to use the immersion heater water is directly getting heated so we can write the answer like this when using first of all we have to write down the answer immersion heater right immersion heater this is our answer reason for using this thing because because it is more efficient as water is as water is directly heated in hot plate in hot plate the vessel the vessel should heat up the vessel should heat up right in hot plate the vessel should heat up first then water therefore more time will be taken more time will be taken so this is our reason my dear children so it's 
more convenient to use 1510 watt immersion heater rather than using 1500 watt hot plate because in here you can see that immersion heater is our answer because immersion heater is more efficient so because it is more efficient mor is missing so it is more so it is more efficient as water is directly heated so that's why we have to use the immersion heater now in a hot plate the vessel should be heat up first then water therefore more time will be taken so this is the answer for that question so we'll head on to the next question then Type two instances where illumination of several bulbs are utilized. So, illumination of several bulbs are utilized in different places, in parties, in festivals, in uh, wedding ceremonies, in uh, different kinds of, uh, you know, ceremonial occasions, right? Like in those kind of situations, we use the illumination of several bulbs especially we use leds in these processes right in order to save electricity so we can write down the answers in parties in parties in festivals in festivals in in religious places in religious places also like in temples right we use this illumination uh, of several bulbs right Write three uses of LED bulbs other than emission of light. So, other than emission of light, you have to write down three other uses of LED bulbs. Okay, three other uses of LED bulbs. So, in order to, now the main energy type which is given out by LED bulbs is the, is the light energy. So, we, in order to, like in illumination, we use LED and uh, also to get light, to light up our houses, we use LEDs. So, that's because of LEDs giving out light. Other than that, in like what kind of an occasion do we use LEDs, right? So, there are several other users of LED as well. Main use of LED is that we use LED in order to give signals right in order to give signals we use led okay for a simple example street lights if you take street lights red color street lights means the stop green colors go yellow stand by like that way for those things leds are being utilized so at that time to provide signals we use the illumination of LEDs then after that if you take a certain instrument like electrical chargers laptop chargers mobile phone chargers sometimes uh, electric kettles right in those kinds of materials or instruments we use LEDs in order to give out or in order to see whether the equipment is working or not so when it is being plugged into the electric current an led is going to light up so that is going to that that's help right that that helps to identify whether the instrument or whether the appliance is going to work or not right so that's the second case and the third case is that 
we can use these leds right we can use these leds like in earlier cases in different illuminations in order to get different types of lights therefore in digital screens in digital screens we use led bulbs so my dear children digital screens are like televisions so make televisions also we can use led bulbs so in digital screens and televisions we use led bulbs so other than the emission of light right other than the emission of light these are several other uses of led bulbs so we can write our answers to provide signals to provide signals number two to make digital screens to make digital screens then to check whether to check whether electrical to check whether electrical instruments are working or not to check whether electrical instruments are working or not right so these are the other users of led rather than emission of light okay then write a use of permanent resistor so we use permanent resistor in order to control current in a circuit right so the so that is the main use of the permanent resistor actually it's been used to reduce the current flow in a circuit so we can write used to reduce the current flow in a circuit so permanent resistors are used to reduce the current flow in a circuit write the expanded form of given short terms led light emitting diode expanded form light emitting diode light emitting diode is the expanded form of the led then next one ldr light dependent resistor light dependent light dependent resistor ldr so led is the light emitting diode ldr is the light dependent resistor 
right then to these are the two expanded forms for the shorter names of led and ld are my dear children so the next question write two things which used to solder electrical components to a circuit board i told you that or when we we studied that in order to solder an equipment or component to a circuit board we are going to use electric bout plus in order to solve in soldering process i mean to fix this component we have to use lead so we are melting lead and fixing that component to the board that's how the soldering process works so the two instruments that we need are the electrical bout or bout and the second one lead piece of lead or metal lead lead strings so lead strings Second one would be bout. Then the next one, write two safety precautions that need to be followed when soldering electrical components to a circuit board. So, when soldering these electrical components to a circuit board, what are the precautions that we need to follow? So, you have to write down two of these. So I told you that electric bout is a type of a instrument that utilizes heating effect of electric current. Means it is going to draw out large amount of electricity. So if it is going to draw out large amount of electricity, then there is a problem, my dear children. Then there is a case of having, there is a high chance of having leakage of electricity or else there is a possibility to get electric shock. So in that case, it is wise to wear a pair of slippers, right? It's wise to use a pair of slippers. Then in handling that lead, lead strings, you know that lead is a type of a metal. So electricity is getting conducted by lead as well as heat energy too. So there might be burns in our hand if you touch it with bare hands as the lead is getting heated quite fast. So it's better to use a pair of forceps, right? Better to use a forcep, a handling equipment in order to handle the lead. Okay, forcep is a good thing, right? So we have to use a forcep in handling lead. And the next thing is that it's better to use, it's wise to use pair of slippers when we are working with the bout. So we can write down our two answers. Wearing pair of slippers. Wearing wearing slippers and the next one would be using forceps using forceps to hold the lid right to hold lid we have to use forceps and if you can or oh, uh, wearing gloves are also okay right if you can but however these two points are really important wearing slippers may save you from electric shocks and using forceps to hold lead is going to help you to avoid burns created by that burning effect or the heat in effect of lead. If you are going to touch it with your bare hand, there might be a possibility that the heat energy generated from the lead that would sometimes uh, burn your hand, right? So therefore, in order to hold the lead, you can use a pair of forceps, right? Identify the given electrical components 
So there are several circuit symbols given in here. Actually, there are eight circuit symbols. So you have to write down what are these electrical components. So A, it's really simple. It's a diode and you can see that two arrows are pointing away from the diode. So means that light is emitting out. So this is a diode that's going to emit light. It's a light emitting diode or else an LED. LED. Next one B. This is just a diode. There are no any lines or arrows in it. So therefore my dear children, this is just a junction diode. Junction diode or else just diode is also enough. Junction diode. Junction diode. Then you know that symbol. This symbol is the symbol of resistor. Right. This is the symbol of resistor. And there is an arrow between the resistor symbol. So it indicates the variable resistor. Variable resistor. Variable resistor. Next one. Once again, the resistance symbol. Now the arrows are facing towards the symbol. Means that light should come and fall onto the surface. So, if it is light related resistor, definitely this is a light dependent resistor, which is also referred as an LDR. So, this is LDR. Light dependent resistor. light dependent resistor then the next one this is also another symbol that we use for the resistor right you know that both these symbols are correct for a resistor these zigzag lines and that box kind of a one both the things are mentioning or both the things are indicate a resistor so this is a Resistor, but remember to write permanent resistor. Permanent resistor. Permanent resistor. Then the next one. This is very obvious, my dear children. It's a bulb. Dry cell. And a switch. Right, so these are the new things that we learned. All the other things we learned already. Okay, right. So, my dear children, let's move on with the next question. State three factors that affects the resistance of a conductor. So, resistance of a conductor is depending on three factors. Number one is the length of the conductor. Number two is the cross-sectional area or the thickness of the conductor. Number three, the material which the conductor is made of. Okay, so those are the three, those are the three key factors that the resistance is depending on. So resistance is depending on these three factors. Length of the conductor, cross-sectional area or the thickness, then nature of the material. So, we will write down the answers. Number one, length of the conductor. Right. 
length of the conductor. Number two, second one, thickness. area of cross section area of cross section thickness number 3 third factor third factor is the nature of the material nature of the conductor in records material which made of material which made of that is the third factor so length of the conductor thickness or cross-sectional area nature of the conductor or the material which made of write the relationship between resistance and each of the factor which you mentioned above in 26th question so you have to write down the relationship between resistance and these factors right actually the third one third one is the nature of the conductor no so according to the nature we can say that the resistance is going to change that's it so there are only two factors actually which we need to consider right what happens when change in these factors? Those two main factors are length of the conductor and the thickness. So, we'll write down for those two. Nature of the conductor, we can't directly say the relationship. It depends according to the material. There is no such relationship like it's directly related or inversely related like that way. We can't state a direct relationship between the nature of the material. So, therefore, we'll write down for other two cases or other two facts so number one length you know that it's showing a direct relation showing a direct relation right showing a direct relation means when increasing length when increasing length resistance increase When increasing length resistance increase then in the next when decreasing when decreasing length when decreasing length resistance decrease right so when increasing length resistance increase when decreasing length resistance decrease then the second factor number two second factor is the area of cross-section
length is the first factor area of the cross section is the second factor so this is also showing inverse relation inverse relation so my dear children area of cross section is showing an inverse relation i have explained this thing under the heat in effect thing right when you are discussing about the resistance so area of cross section is showing an inverse relation means when area of cross section is high resistance is low resistance is low when area of cross section when area of cross section is high resistance is low then the other one when area of cross section is low resistance resistance is high so these are the two main factors which is going to affect the resistance nature nature of the substance is also a factor but however like this we can't write down a direct or inverse relationship so that's why i kept it in the same way it's depending among according to the material right so length it is showing a direct relation means that when increasing length resistance increase when decreasing length resistance decrease the number two area of cross section it is inversely related or inverse relation when area of cross section is high resistance is low when area of cross section is low resistance is high opposite related okay inversely related right so these are the two factors then name two instruments that can be used to vary current in a circuit so two instruments that can be used to vary current in a circuit really simple right it's varying the current in a circuit no so don't write switches we can't write switches why is that varying means changing so in order to change the current we have to use variable resistors you can't write even permanent resistors right we have to use variable resistors so one thing is volume controller volume controller then next one you know rheostat rheostat so all of these things are variable resistors variable resistors okay to vary the current we use variable resistors 
From above instruments, what can be used to adjust current to a desired value in a socket? So, to change the current into a desired value, we use the rheostat. Rheostat. Right. Those two questions are very easy, my dear children. Right. We already learned these things. Then, the 30th question, write five things that need to follow when using household electrical appliances. When using household electrical appliances, what are the things, so write five things that we need to follow. Right, number one, using, using slippers. using slippers when working using slippers when working with iron rice cookers etc so, using slippers when working with iron, rice cookers, etc. Why do we need to use slippers? Because I told you that these instruments are going to draw out heavy amount of electrical chargers when they are operating as there is high amount of resistance in it. So, there might be a possibility that you get an electric shock as there is high amount of electricity. So, it's wise to use a pair of slippers, okay, right. So, using slippers when working with iron, rice cookers, etc. Next one, keep dry, clean hands. Keep dry, comma, clean hands within brackets without water. Without water. Okay. Because water is a good conductor of electricity. Normal water, household water, it is a good conductor of electricity as there are several substances dissolved in it. So, therefore, if you use electrical appliances with wet hands, there can be a possibility that you get electric shock, okay. So, then the next one, avoid, avoid using appliances Avoid using appliances when, avoid using appliances when there is lightning. When there is lightning. So, avoid using appliances when there is lightning. Then, I know that you guys are using multi-plugs and plug sockets. But however, when we are using multi-plugs and wire cords, it's important to use like FIB or else two or three instruments together don't use like five or six so that the circuit will overload okay so when using multiplugs comma wire cords we need to uh, we need to consider about the overloading right we have to plug in uh, we have to plug in two or three instruments only not several ones so we can write when using multi 
मल्टीप्लग्स कमा वायर कोड्स वायर कोड्स बी अवेयर be aware of overloading be aware of overloading right means that plug plug appliances which are important which are only important so we need to when we are using multi plugs or wire cords we have to be aware of overloading means that we need to plug only appliances which are only important to us okay if they are not important then we have to remove it then the fifth one using using efficient using efficient appliances so using efficient appliances example led bulbs led bulbs instead cf right so instead of cfl bulbs you can use led bulbs for an example so my dear children first and foremost thing using slippers when working with iron or rice cookers etc that generate heat energy by the electric current keep dry clean hands without water okay avoid using appliances when there is lightning avoid using appliances when there is lightning when using multi plugs wire cords be aware of overloading means that we need to plug in appliances which are only important right then next one using efficient using efficient appliances that would save you are electricity examples led bulbs instead of cfl bulbs so led bulb instead cfl right these are uh, five things that you can follow when using household electrical appliances right my dear children so we answered 30 essay type questions related to the electricity lesson so there are more questions which are coming but not from this chapter we'll continue the other questions from our next chapter